I want to speak to you uh, today on uh, faith and obedience to God's calling. And uh, friends, let's take note of what the Lord is saying to you. There are many people who are, there are many people that I teach in the ministry during the week, you know, that really just want to give up. You know, they've, they've done so much, but there just seems to, you know, people are, are tired, you know, and they don't understand, or they, they've been too conformed to the world, but not so much to the renewing of their minds. So, um, if you remember Abraham, the story of Abraham, how he obeyed God, I know that you all know that story. I, I don't somehow have a scripture up for it, but, um, you know, he had a child at the age of 100. That was a long time to wait. Okay. And um, one thing that really amazed me about Abraham is that whatever the Lord said, he, he kind of understood, you know. I mean, he went astray early on. He went to Hagar, and he tried to do things his way, but not God's way, okay. And... Uh, but anyway, after a, it took them a long time to conceive the promised child, um, you know, not long after that, we find that, uh, that God says to him, now, you know, now that you've got your only child, go and sacrifice him on Mount Moriah. Can you imagine how he felt? Um, you know, I've waited all these years to have a child, now you tell me to go and kill him on Mount Moriah. And, um, but what was so amazing about that is that he took him up to that mountain. He obeyed God. And of course, we all know that the angel came to him quickly and said, no, don't do that. Oh, God was testing him, okay. He wanted to see if he was going to truly follow him, you know, even at that age. And, uh, you know, so uh, what, what is so amazing about that story is the obedience uh, that Abraham actually had. And uh, it was accounted unto him as righteousness. Um, so that's, you know, when we look at things, you know, in, in our lives today, you know, we, we really, you know, have to become obedient to God's calling, and to his word, okay? And uh, because Abraham was obedient, um, uh, he said, I will bless you, and I will multiply your seed, um, you know, I think he said, even as, as much as the stars. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that wonderful? And God was pleased with him because he was obedient to what the Lord had told him to do. If the Lord tells you to do something, will you do it? Okay. So uh, God will let us go through situations on our journey, some of them really harsh ones, and some of them, you know, are sent by God, and some of them are you know, demonic in its way, not sent by God. But through all of this, God is testing us to see if we really are serious about following him and all that he has for us. So God promised him rewards, and, you know, he gave him the security that he really needed to sustain him through what he was going through so, you know, friends, this demonstrates to us, you know, that what we're going through, um, you know, what, whatever you're going through in life, we're all on a different journey, okay? And we all have, have different jobs and different, uh, you know, things to handle in life. But through all the trials and the hardships and the tribulations, really, what really makes an impact, really, is how you go through it. How do you handle your storms along the way? Do you go through it complaining? Do you go through it judging others? Uh, you know, 
I really believe that one can get out of the wilderness a lot quicker if you stop complaining. We see that in the Old Testament, you know, where they were complaining. You know, God had even sent them quails. He had provided so much for them, yet they still built an idol. They still did all these things, and yet God had manifested things in front of them, and yet they still went astray. Look at what God has done in your lives, friends. You can always see the blessings along the way. Yes, there have been difficult times. There are hard times that we will all go through. Nobody's excluded while we're in the flesh. We will certainly go through it. And uh, I believe it's how we go through it that really matters. Because as a Christian, we are known by the love that we have for one another. So love will cover a multitude of sins. Okay, so it's your attitude towards the wilderness that really means a lot at the end of the day. You know, it's the owner, it, it's, the big, it's the one who ends, the finisher. That is what the Lord is looking to, not how you came into this world, not, you know, there may be generational curses that you're battling with. But friends, all of that is in the past today because you're going to be delivered from that in Jesus' name. But it's how you maintain your healing. It's how you maintain things. Your walk with the Lord. You know, we're not just to walk with the Lord on a Sunday morning at church. We are to walk, be constantly in spirit and in his truth. We to constantly be in the word of God so that we can maintain that healing and that deliverance in our lives. Because it's important that we maintain it because you don't want to lose it. You remember that man at the pool of Bethesda, Jesus had healed him. Later on, Jesus sees him in the marketplace. He says, sin no more, lest something worse come upon you. So we know that you know, uh, you know, healing can be lost, but we don't want to go there, okay? Once you've tasted and seen that the Lord is good, you don't want to go back to your past life or what happened in the past or even be speaking about who hurt you in the past. That is such a hindrance, friends, to healing and deliverance. We don't want to be speaking about what the mother-in-law said or you know, friends, sometimes we just have to let it go or just get over it, you know, and move on because you're holding yourself in that bondage. You're not holding anyone else in bondage but yourself if you hold on to that resentment and that unforgiveness. Um, we want to be free today. How many of you want to be free today? Hallelujah. We all want to be free and walking in the promises of God. Now, the promises of God come with a condition. They really do. You know, if you ab abide in me, I will abide in you. You know, if you say unto the mountain, go and throw yourself into the sea and do not doubt but believe. So, there, if you have a look at the promises, you will see that they actually have come with conditions, okay? And it's so important that I had an email the other day of some gentleman saying, uh, I've reached out to the Lord. And, and he's not interested in me, he doesn't care, he doesn't want to answer me. And uh, friends, you know, the, the sad part about that, if you're not rooted and grounded in the word of God, you will conform to the world. You'll say what the world is saying. The devil wants you to say that. And uh, that's when the Holy Spirit departs because he cannot be grieved. You cannot grieve the Holy Spirit. That's why I say to people, when you come up for your, your healing and deliverance, be declaring the word of God. Don't say, I didn't receive, if you don't feel any different. Faith is not a feeling, it's a believing. Okay, so I'm prepping you up here to receive <clears throat> your healing in your deliverance. Okay, so, um, you know, it, it's important, friends, that we stay close to the cross. Don't just come up and receive healing and just think, well, okay, that's it. You know, I can carry on living the way 
I did before because it's not going to work that way. Uh, we do need to develop a relationship with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, um, hallelujah. And friends, just remember, promotion comes from the Lord. You know, you may be struggling to really get to the next level in life, but if you really have a passion to do what the Lord has called you to do, you just keep on going at it for at the right time, the Lord will come through, you know. He promises never to leave us nor forsake us. So like that gentleman who's saying, oh, well, God has abandoned me. He's put these things upon me. Or, you know, just remember God is a loving God. Um, you know, your attitude towards God is so important. Uh, we must honor him. We must speak his word. Uh, because if we keep in speaking the negative things about what God isn't doing for us, that won't get us any further. So it's important that we stay rooted and grounded in him because you know that the promise is there. You know that the promise is also for an appointed time and, <clears throat> and that it will come. And the promise will come if you do not give up. So that's important, friends, uh, and an encouragement for you to stay rooted and grounded in him. And just remember, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And, uh, you know, I say that so often, but it really is true. And uh, we need to be seeking the Lord in love, not in rebellion, not against him, okay? For he, he that promised is faithful, okay? So, um, okay, so here's two scriptures to help you, friends. In Mark 4, verses 4, it says, But he said to him, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Jesus said to him, if you can believe, you see, he's giving you a condition there. He says, you know, if you can believe, all things are possible to the one that believes. So you must believe God to get out of your situation today. I mean, I certainly do. I always say to people, you know, no matter what I'm going through, I believe I will see the glory of God, because that's what I believe. Even though everything in the natural dictates otherwise, I believe I will see the glory of God. And the naysayers will come along to you and say, but you haven't this, you can't, you can't, but I can do all things through Christ, who gives me strength, should be your answer, friends. Don't be conformed to this world, because you always get the well-meaning people uh, I call them well-meaning because they are, but they're ignorant, you know. They want to speak negatively. Um, you know, if you go to that place, all they want is your money, you know. All, please, they don't know the person, you know. The thing is, people judge before they even know the truth, okay, which is dangerous. Because the Bible even says, touch not mine anointed. So you've got to be careful in doing that, okay. So, friends, it's important that we draw close to God. Let your heart be rooted and grounded in Him. You must believe God to bring you out of the situation, you know. Um, and faith is the substance of things hoped for. You know, I always love Hebrews 11. If I'm ever looking for some encouraging scriptures to help me, even along my own walk with the Lord, I read Hebrews 11. You know, and that is just so encouraging. I love it, you know. And in that of Hebrews 11, verses 6 is without faith, it's impossible to please. And you see how all the people of old, uh, you know, by faith did this and by faith did that. And the Lord came through for them, you know. Um, even so, faith without works is dead. What are we to do? We are to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you know. You've come, some of you, from, from quite a distance, you know, to today. But you just believe. You just know that when you come up today, that God is going to bless you. It doesn't matter what people say around you. Forget that. God says, and what God says should be your final say. Okay. So, um, you know... Uh, you have to do what God has put upon your heart to do, friends. Perhaps some of you are going through a process. 
you know, I'm even speaking to this from our own journey that we are on in the ministry. You've got to go through the processes, even though you may sweat at times, you know, perhaps you're in a, in a business and you're just trying to get that going, but you're doing what is right. You're doing what you believe is right and what the Lord has called you to do. So you just keep on going. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Because with your heart, you believe it. And with your mouth, you confess it. And with your heart, you believe that you're going to see that blessing come to pass. And with your mouth, you are confessing it. You're not confessing the doubt, the unbelief. Remember, promotion comes from the Lord. Too often today, people are looking to man or woman for their promotion. Friends, lay that aside. God is the one who promotes us. Okay, so I believe we're all on a journey with that. And it's so important that we understand that he is the source of everything everything. Um, we must seek him. I always like to listen to T.B. Joshua, and he always says, if you know how much you need God, and it's so true, friends, you need God to do everything, to stand, to sit. You need God in all things. Apart, the word says, apart from God, we can do nothing. Absolutely. Isn't it an encouragement to develop a really close relationship with the Lord? Okay. Because apart from Him, we can do nothing. And uh, that settles it, really, you know. And uh, He knows the situation that you're going through. He knows the trials and the tribulations, and He has allowed it, but He now wants to see how you're going to handle it. You know, are you going to bless the Lord in the good times and in the bad times as well? Just remember, He never leaves you nor forsakes you. He loves you and He cares so much for you, even more than you will ever really truly know. He really loves you. And, um, you know, one of the greatest blessings in this lifetime uh, is believing God for your breakthrough even before you see it, you know. And that's what's so amazing about God. He gives us faith to believe Him. He puts visions and dreams on our hearts. And uh, never go against uh, or think, well, you know, I've tried this. It's just really not going to work for me. You just keep on going. The devil wants you to give up, friends. But please, do not give up. And I really believe that that honors God, just like Abraham, you know, uh, when there's no provision, when there's nothing happening, that you have this passion to fulfill what God has upon your heart, and you keep on going at it, because you know that Christ and His Word are one, you know that He's reliable, you know that everything that He said in the Word is true, and it's for you and it's for me, and uh, we have to believe it. Believe, believe, believe. It is so important, friends. Um, this, this is, um, I was just about to speak about the scripture now. Uh, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Okay, isn't that amazing? And that's what you see happening here in the deliverances. It's faith. Some people say, how do you do this and how does this work? And I... Faith. <laughs> faith. It's letting God be God and every man a liar, basically. That's what that one scripture says. You know, if we can just learn to let God move in our lives, even though it's perhaps not really what we want, God will always lead us His way, okay? He keeps on turning us back to His way along the path of life. So friends, no, no, no matter what you're going through, if you have faith, um, God is going to deliver you and uh, to change your situation and uh, to save a loved one.
just think about it. That loved one at home, you know, that's, you know, is, is, is not really open to what we do here. But you've been praying for them. Those prayers are not lost. God will come through. And you'll see them. Hallelujah. So, you know, you will see victory happen in due time. And it all rests on how we believe and how we confess. Because some situations you think, I wonder if God will ever come through in that way. But you believe, you will see the glory of God. Okay, so no matter what you're going through today, friends, stake your life on the word. God is the only one that cannot lie. People can lie to you, but God is truthful. And if he has said it, it will come to pass. It will happen at the appointed time. Okay, so just make an unwavering commitment today, friends, that you are going to be committed to his word. Just make that commitment in your heart because you want the anointing to flow in and through your lives. Friends, there are many out there that need Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and he's coming. He is coming soon. And um, we need to change our hearts. We need to act in love and show people that we are Christians by the love that we have for one another. So, hallelujah. And just remember, whatever you're going through right now, Jesus prayed that your faith would not fail. Isn't that interesting? Because he knew you'd and tested, and you'd have to go through various situations, but he's praying for you now that your faith will not fail, that you're going to stand on what the Word of God says, that he supplies your needs according to to his riches in glory. And that is happening. And God cannot lie. Hallelujah. All we have to do is believe it. And he will come through. Okay. So, okay. But if you don't believe it, if you don't believe you can have it, you won't have it. You know, it's spiritual law, basically. Well, you know, I don't believe I'll get that increase at the end of the month. But don't worry, you won't. Because as you have believed in your heart and confessed with your mouth has been your salvation, you know. So it's very important that, friends, we believe it. For as a man thinks within his heart, so is he. So a lot has got to do with what you believe in your heart, okay. And, uh, you know, and this is the work that you have to do, okay. I've got some work for you. Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. Okay, so you're looking for methods, you're looking for ways to try and get to the Lord. And he says, if you would just believe, you will see the glory of God. How easy is that to receive from our Lord? He's not asking for much from us, but just our belief. And friends, if we act upon the word, if we believe what it says about every situation, about your finances, about your health, about your deliverance, about whatever it is you're going through, believe it, just believe it, because he is, you know, if you doubt, uh, if we waver, we are like waves that are tossed about. And he says, you will don't expect to receive anything from the Lord. So he puts it very clearly there, you know. Uh, you know, even Jesus went up to the man, you know, the, the man who had the child who came along. He says, do you believe I can do this? What do you think the Lord is asking for here? He wants to know. Do you believe him? Do you fully believe him? Because we can say we believe him in our head, but not in our heart. Okay. God is looking here. He's not looking here. All right. Okay. So that's the work that we have to do, friends. Uh, some homework for you that will last a lifetime is to believe in the one that he sent. And um, as you have believed, so you shall receive. So, um, you know, if you can believe, all things are possible to the one that believes. And uh, we're justified through faith. We have peace, peace with God through Jesus Christ. We can have that peace even when times are, are hard. Uh, we have that rest in him because of his word. Um, hallelujah. 
Um, think about the centurion. So he had faith uh, to tell Jesus uh, to just say the word. He said, I don't even have to get there. You know, you don't have to get there, Jesus. If you would just say the word, I know he'll be healed. Jesus loved that. He said, I haven't seen anything like that in Israel. Wow, the centurion is a man of authority. And if he believes that if I say the word, he will be healed. And the servant was healed that very hour. Isn't that encouraging, friends? Um, So he understood that the kingdom of heaven was actually within him. He knew these things. He'd obviously been in the word of God. And um, it's it's so, I, I just love it when I look, you know, at the scriptures of when Jesus healed people. And um, there's another one of the two blind men that they cried out to Jesus, um, asking him to have mercy on them. And you remember that one? And then Jesus said, you know, uh, do you believe that I can do this? Okay. And, and then Jesus said, uh, according to your faith, uh, be it unto you. And right then and there, their eyes were open instantly. And uh, there are just so many other scriptures in the Bible that really help encourage to build our faith in God, you know, because we, we're wanting prayer for healing, but we need to be rooted and grounded in the Word of God so that we've got some foundation. And this is what maintaining healing and deliverance is. It's not just about receiving your healing. It's about maintaining it in the Word. You need a foundation uh, in your life. And I can't really suggest anything more than the Word of God to bring about that, that healing and that deliverance in your life. Okay, because he sent his word and he healed them and he delivered us from, from all of our distractions. So, you know, I, I just love the word, just looking at all those ways that Jesus healed and we apply that here yeah, and it works, absolutely works. And he even says that the glory of this present house will be greater than the former glory So we're going to see many signs and wonders happen in these last days uh, before Jesus comes back and it's all to bring souls into the kingdom of God. So friends, be encouraged today. Have faith like that lady with the issue of blood. Just come up knowing that it's going to happen and it will. It will definitely happen. But please, friends, let's release things from our hearts today. Let's release all those hurts and all those pains. Let's have nothing that will stop us from receiving what the Lord is trying to get to us because he exalts his word above his name, which means we can call the name of Jesus, but if we have unforgiveness, it won't work, okay? For he says that he exalts his word above all that his name represents. Therefore, God's word and his spirit must join together. And that's why we're seeing such wonderful miracles because I choose to just preach that to you. Um, so that you would understand that if there is a hindrance there, if there is a boss that you need to forgive, if there is whoever, a friend, a neighbor, um, the list goes on. Friends, will you right now, just in your heart, say, Father, I forgive them. What they did was wrong. Doesn't mean what they did was right, no. What they did was wrong. But Lord, I choose to forgive them like you forgave, Lord, I forgive too. Hallelujah. So friends, obedience is so important in our lives. And I pray that that message has blessed you today.